what happens when we go from a turntable with vinyl records to um, a, a yeah, digital DJ, tool yeah. where everyone's using laptops to DJ. The question is how do you negotiate new tools in any culture when the culture is so used to a single one? I wrote you know, 300 pages on, on this question um, and that's kind of the question that I, I'm continuing to pursue both as a teacher and as a performer. It's never really been about the gear and the technology, even though that's what you know I'm teaching technically and like how to use all these different tools and technologies and gear. But it's really not about that. I think if you're not a good, if you don't have the musical sensibility, um, then that's then that's going to really stunt you as an artist. Not saying that you have to be a, like a virtuosic singer or a virtuosic drummer, but you have to know what makes music tick in this genre or that genre. So if you're working with a hip hop artist, you have to know like. What, what defines a trap beat and what makes, like which trap beats have topped the charts versus which ones haven't. So clearly there's something that helps music appeal to people. Um, and I think part of that is by developing your listening skills, which is what we're trying to teach through our theory sequence and things like that, um, that can help you distinguish what you're doing. That in addition to the business side, which would be something like branding. So what do you have to offer? Um, are you just trying to, you know, copy someone else's kind of story or, or image or style? Or are you taking what people have done for a hundred years in this industry and reinventing it, kind of flipping it in various ways? Part of that has to do with branding, part of that has to do with, um, you know, your public presence and also the story you're trying to tell, right? We're in an industry that's about desire and identification. So listeners want to be able to identify with artists. They also want to aspire to be an artist. So we're really working in this very psychological space where we're trying to make music that's unique and innovative and, and pleasing to our ears, but also that music is shaping society and culture in really unique ways. So I think it's history and culture and the social factors of what we do are never distinct. A lot of people would argue, you know, your conservatory model of music is always that music is autonomous and that it's this beautiful thing outside of culture and society. And that's why we love it so much. It allows us to escape, right? But actually, I think it's proven time and time again that music, what makes it valuable to us is that it comes from very specific social, cultural, historical circumstances. And without that, it just exists in the void and it doesn't make sense to anyone. So I think, I think that's the other big picture thing we're trying to teach is that music is never separate from the, the stories that our students come from. So students come in with very unique stories and we just try to get them to tell those stories because those stories are just as important as the music they're gonna make. With most of the students that come in here, like that I, that I teach, the content is always there. The content is always impressive. A student that just starts making music within a given, within a semester, they can produce interesting music. But what distinguishes the students who really end up going on and, and kind of making it in that industry as producers or as engineers or whatever, is that they have a coherent story to tell. Keep your ears open and be open to what, um, you know, what the industry offers, but also what you, know what you have to offer the industry.